I recently bought a trend digital angle rule, the DAR200, for a project that I'm working on. And I thought this would be a good time to do a review of this product, look at its features, and then do some tests to see, see what its accuracy is like, and look at the reliability of it in terms of when you measure an angle, and you come back and you measure it again, do you get the same result? So let's get to it. Okay, so let's start by taking it out of its packaging and see what you get in the pack. I have done this before, so it's not a surprise to me. So, you get the rule, you get a battery. The battery um, I've already fitted, and there's a little tab here, which you push down, and it releases a little compartment that has an LR32 battery. That's the negative, the positive is on the bottom, and you just slide it in. You get some instructions, and then you get a pack of instructions in other languages if you don't speak English. In terms of features, we've got the digital angle gauge here which when you turn this reads off an angle in degrees. You get markings from 0 to 400 millimeters without any interruption and then you get markings in inches with 30 seconds of an inch marked up that start from here and go to here seven inches and then they start from here and go over to here in seven inches. So one of the features they've managed to achieve here is have a rule that measures all continuously up to 400 millimeters but have not done the same on the inches. For our American friends I think that will be a problem. You know I would have started the inches here and designed it in the same way that they designed the millimetres to continue along here and you would have got 16 inches which would have been quite useful I think um, but it's not really designed to be a rule it's designed to measure angles so perhaps we can forgive it that it's got a little knob here that allows you to lock the rule in place so if you um, set it at an angle you can then lock it at that angle and it stays there and it's pretty stiff actually which is pretty good and then it's got a, obviously got a zero meter so you can zero it out and it folds up like this and has a hole for a nail so that you can hang it or a hook so that you can hang it up on your um, tool which is quite a nice feature so they're the features now we'll get on to the tests. So the first set of tests I'm going to do are about accuracy of measurement. So I'm going to use known angles. I'm going to measure with the digital angle rule what the digital angle rule says the measure is. I'm then going to move the digital angle rule and then I'll re-measure the angle. I'll do that maybe 10 times for each angle and we'll mark up to see if it repeatedly always measures the same angle. The importance of these tests is that accuracy is a combination of the quality of the materials and workmanship that's gone into making the tool, but also the design of the tool. If the tool is difficult to use, then you won't always get the same measurements. So an example of this is the speed square. The speed square would be quite difficult to use if it didn't have this lip on it. Without this lip, you'd have to be lining up the edge, trying to make sure that was nice and flat against the edge before you scribed. And you'd, you'd find it really difficult to get a square. But because it's got a lip on it, you can just push it against the side and you know you're going to get a square edge. So that this is a design feature that makes it easy to get repeatable measurements. 
So in designing these tests, I'm hopefully measuring not just the quality of the tool, but also the design of the tool in that can an average person like myself get the same results consistently. To help me not be biased, I've put a little flap of tape over the display so that I can set it to the angle that I think I'm measuring and then I'll read it off so that I'm not being influenced by what's on the display because I know what angles I'm measuring. Okay, so let's get to it. First of all, I'm going to zero the device. So that's perfectly flat. If I put that on its side, I'm just going to press the zero button. It's already on zero, but I'll press the zero button anyway. Okay, now I'll do my measures. I won't show you all of these on video. It'll be like watching paint dry. So that's 45 degrees, 45.0, which is what we expected. Now I'm going to open it up, bring it back, measure again. Forty five point one. And here's my point really in terms of measurement. Measurement is also has an element of the user in it, like with any tool, the better you are at using it, the more accurate things will be. That's forty five. Zero. I'll carry on this. I'll do 10 measures and then I'll do the next one. Okay, so those first measures all came out remarkably consistent. With the exception of the second measurement, which was 45.1, all of them came out at 45.0. So I'm really pleased with that. I think that shows that it's pretty accurate for 45 degrees. I'm now going to do 120 degrees. I'm not going to re-zero it because it was zeroed and I don't think you'd constantly be re-zeroing it. So to do, to do the next one, it's going to be all the way round to there. Three hundred and fifteen degrees, which is what you'd expect. So I'll now go on and repeat these measurements, going all the way round again, and check that I keep getting the same measure, 314.9, So obviously something with my second measurement always goes wrong. I'll continue this off camera. Well, seven of the measurements came out at 314.9 and three of the measurements came out at 315.0. I then straightened the rule up again, made sure it was nice and flat and checked to see if it said zero and it did. Um, so I think there is a a minor discrepancy there in the measurements. <clears throat> Either it's human error, how I'm measuring it, or in the or in the device itself. Either way, you're going to get the same result um, if you've got the level of skill that I have, which is a slight discrepancy over the quite a large range. So we measure, we're measuring from here all the way around to here, which obviously you wouldn't normally do. You'd measure this angle. Um, so, but that gives you an idea. Okay, so I'm now going to do the next measure. The next measure is simply 180 degrees. So we're simply going to open it up like that, place it flat, and then I'll read off 180 degrees.
I'm then going to move the measure, place it flat again, 180 degrees. And I'll do this for 10 measures off camera. Well, a 180 degree test gave a consistent 180.0 degrees for all 10 tests. So that's really impressive. I'm now going to do the 90 degree test. Ninety. Is that ninety? Is it? Yeah, ninety. Looking upside down. That's ninety degrees. So I'll open it up. Do that again. Ninety. I'll carry on doing this off camera and come back with the results. Okay, so the 90 degree test um, was a very consistent 90.0 degrees on every measurement, so that again is very impressive. <clears throat> what I'm now going to do is I'm going to set this to 60 degrees. That's at 60 degrees. I'm now going to lock it in place. And I'm just going to move it around a little bit, I'm not shaking it, I don't think that's necessary. But I just want to make sure that that lock doesn't really change the degrees. You know, could I use this to mark that 60 degree line? And perhaps do another one and not worry about. the angle changing. And it's still 60 degrees. So that seems to work quite well. So that, as I said earlier, it is quite tight. Actually, I can't, can't move it at all when it's locked. That is really impressive. That is really impressive when it's locked. Okay. That's that test. My last test is going to be about um, consistency of angle. So if I measured the same angle, uh, and I, if I measure an unusual angle a number of times, do I, do I always get the same result? So I'm just going to set that test up and we'll come back. Okay, the way I've set this test up is I can measure the angle on the inside like that, or I can measure it on the outside like that, and I would expect to get the same angle. <clears throat> so I'm going to measure the inside measurement a number of times, then I'll do the outside a number of times, and we'll just see how that comes out. So, inside outside. So let's do this. Okay so what I conclude from this test is I think the inaccuracies that I'm seeing are probably to do with um, my skill at using the device which is a at which to some extent is a function of the design of the device. Um, on the inside, I'm pretty consistent, either at 43.7 or 43.8 degrees. On the outside, um, it's a little bit harder to measure. Uh, and I started off with 43.9, then 43.2, then 43.6. After some time, it looks like I got more consistent results, but they were still wavering a bit. Um, you know, so the lowest I got was 43.2, the highest I got was 43.9. Um, they were my first two measurements. 
I've got quite a few that are in the 43.7, 43.8 mark. There's one, two, three, four that are in that area. Um, compared to you know all ten on the inside on the inside measurement, but I think that's a function. Well, it is a function of um, using the device to make sure you're accurately against all of the points that you want to measure. Um, so I don't think that's necessarily the fault of the tool, other than you know it, is it is it possible that you could be designed in a way that would make that make that measurement easier. I suspect not, but um, there you go. I think if you're using it, it's possibly going to give you more reliable results if you use it on an inside edge, just because it's open to less error from the user than on an outside edge. Um, if you know anything about measuring angles and um, can confirm that or um, suggest a different approach, then let me know um, in the comments. So here are my conclusions. For £16 on Amazon or £20 at Screwfix, this Trend DAR200 Digital Angle Rule seems like a pretty good buy. If you need to measure angles, it will do it reliably and it will do it consistently. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, then please subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.